So we're going to look at applications of permutations, combinations and arrangements and see some typical questions that um, you could be asked. So this first example is to calculate the number of different ways the letters in the word Tuesday can be arranged. So have a note there that uh, we don't have any repeats. But first of all, we're looking at if we've got this restriction that all the vowels must be next to each other. So thinking about that, we put the vowels into a block by themselves and then the consonants, they're each in their own individual one. We don't have restrictions on those ones, but those vowels must be kept together. So we now have five items. So we'd arrange those in five factorial ways. But also within that block of vowels, they could be arranged in three factorial ways. So we need to times by the three factorial as well to get our total answer of 720. Next, how about if no two vowels could be next to each other? This one's a little tricky to get your head around, so take your time to do this one. What you've got to think about here is, first of all, place out the consonants. Now, we need to spread them out with spaces in between, because we're going to fill those spaces in with the vowels so that they don't go next to each other. We don't have five vowels, though. But first of all, thinking about the consonants, putting those four in would give us four factorial ways. Now, we need to pick three spaces to use to place our vowels in. Okay, so we have five possible places to put them, and we could pick anywhere that we want to put those into. Now, the order that we put them in would give us a different arrangement as well. So the order matters, therefore we're going to use a permutation on this one. So we've got five spaces, we're picking three of them to place our vowels in. The order makes a difference, so it's 5p3. Okay, example number two. A group of eight people made up from four married couples is to be arranged in a line for a photo. How many different arrangements are there where each person is standing next to their spouse? So for this one, you need to think about this as four distinct blocks. So within each block, we have the partners. So each block is a married couple. A is married to B, C is married to D, and so on. So those could be arranged in four factorial ways. But also, within each block, we could switch those two people over. So we could have B, A instead of A, B. So within each block, they could be arranged in two factorial ways. So we also need to multiply by that. We get our final answer of 384. Right, example number three. Four of the letters are to be are to be picked from the word Saturday. How many selections contain at least one A? So we need to consider the options of whether it has just one A or both A's in it, and we have to do that separately. So having one A would look like this. We'd have an A with three spaces to fill. Having taken out that A, we've got seven letters left from Saturday. So we've got seven choose three. There are no repeats once we've taken out the A, so we don't need to worry about that. Two A's would look like this. We've got two spaces to fill. We've taken out two A's, so we have six letters left. So it's six choose two. Seven choose three comes to um, 35, and six choose two is 15. So add them together, and we get 50. All right, and last one for this video. Joshua has a playlist with nine jazz, seven pop, and one classical song. He's playing it on shuffle and uh, he's trying to figure out different ways that it could be ordered. So first of all, with no restrictions at all, if all of those songs could be played in any order, how many different orders could we have? So there are 17 songs altogether, and that's 17 factorial. So that goes to 3.56 times 10 to the 14. Pretty huge. Just think about that when you're uh, shuffling your playlists next. Um, secondly... The pop songs must be played next to each other, so we need to have a bank of those seven pop songs together, and then the nine jazz and one classical separately. So that makes 11 items. If we put those seven pop songs together as one item, then we add on the nine jazz and the one classical, that's 10 separate items like we've seen before. So that could be arranged in 11 factorial ways. Then within the seven pop songs, they could be shuffled in seven factorial ways. So then we get this final answer of 2.01 times 10 to the 11. And the last one, what if 
no two jazz songs could be played next to each other. So Joshua likes his jazz, he's got nine jazz songs, but he doesn't want to hear two in a row. So how many ways could we do that? So if we spread out the um, classical and the pop songs like this with some spaces in between, that gives us eight factorial. Let me just take that back a little bit. So that um, we've got eight items there, they could be arranged in eight factorial ways with spaces left in between to fill in with the jazz songs. Now there are nine spaces and there are nine songs, so we're just going to slot all of those jazz songs in there, and they could be arranged in nine factorial ways. So then we can find our final answer of 1.46 times 10 to the power of 10.